In my first introduction to chicken genetics, I showed how one gene could be dominant over its alternate recessive gene, like the rose comb gene is dominant and the gene for single comb is recessive. But not all genes are either dominant or recessive. Some genes can be co-dominant. That means they can be both expressed, even when they are present in only one copy. Take, for example, the gene for black feathers. It's represented by the letters little b, l. Its alternative gene is represented as a capital B, l. If a chicken has two genes for black feathers, its feathers are black. If a chicken has two of the alternate genes, its feathers are mostly white, although actually there might be some black or grey speckles amongst the white feathers, and the colour is really called splash. If we mate a chicken with two genes for black, with a chicken with two genes for splash, we know that the baby chick will have one of each kind of gene. What colour will the baby chick's feathers be? You might wonder if the capital letter is giving you a clue, because you remember that dominant genes are usually shown as a capital letter, and recessive genes are usually shown with a lowercase letter. But actually the genes for black feathers is not recessive. These two genes are co-dominant, which means that a chicken with one of each, a heterozygous chicken, is neither black nor splash, but is a colour in between, called blue. So just by looking at these three chickens, we know that the black one has two BL genes, the splash chicken has two big BL genes, and the blue chicken has one of each gene. Now we remember that a purebred chicken, which is homozygous for a gene, i.e. has two copies of the same gene, can only pass that gene on to her baby chicks. But our heterozygous blue chick has two different genes. What does she pass on to the next generation? The answer is a matter of chance. Our blue chicken can pass on her big BL gene or her little BL gene, but will only pass one or the other onto her offspring. Her offspring will inherit their second copy of the gene from their father. If a blue chicken mates with a black rooster, the black rooster, who is homozygous for little bl, we know that because he's got black feathers, can only pass a little bl gene on to the next generation. So if our blue chicken happens to also pass on her little bl gene, the offspring will have two little bl genes and so will be black. If our blue chicken happens to pass on her big bl gene, the offspring will have one big bl and one little BL, and so will be blue. The fun really starts when we mate our blue chicken with another blue chicken. The blue hen can pass on either of her two different genes. Since the rooster is also blue, we know he also is heterozygous, so he also could pass on either of his different genes. When we map it out in this grid, which is called a Punnett square because it was first invented by a Mr Punnett, we can see that the next generation can have two big BL genes, and so as we know will be splash, or it can have one big BL and one little BL, which we know will be blue, or it can have two little BL genes, which we remember is the genotype for black. So two blue chickens can have baby chicks that are blue, black, or splash. The blue colour does not breed true. We can even predict how many blue, black and splash chicks there will be. Half will be blue, a quarter will be black and a quarter will be splash. Of course that's the theoretical proportions and you might need a large number of chicks to be able to see in the chicks the predicted proportions of each colour. It's a bit like babies can be boys or girls, and it's pretty much a 50-50 chance which each baby will be, 
but we all know families that have all four boys or three out of three girls because three or four is not a large enough number to be demonstrating the mathematical chances. Not all chickens that look kind of greyish are the blue colour. My Aracana hen, her name is Gonzo, is a colour called lavender. The gene for lavender colour, which actually has the effect of diluting the usual black or red colour in each feather, is completely unrelated to the gene for blue, black or splash. The lavender gene does breed true meaning that if you mate a lavender hen with a lavender rooster, all their chicks will be lavender. That's because the lavender gene is a recessive gene, and as we know, that means it's only expressed if it is present in homozygous form. That means a lavender chicken must have two identical lavender genes, and so can only pass that same lavender gene on to her offspring. So again, just by looking at this chicken, as long as we know she is lavender and not blue, we know what genes she has. If you're trying to breed something in particular, like a pretty grey colour, it helps to know what kind of genes you're working with. And if you're working with more than one characteristic at a time, maybe comb shape plus feather colour plus the colour of the chicken's eyes or legs, you're going to start needing a good calculator. If you want to have a bit of fun without a degree in maths or actually hatching thousands of chickens, I recommend this website, The Chicken Calculator by Kip and Jungle. We'll have a look at some more of those, and in particular the colour genes of Wyandotte chickens, some of which are sex-linked, in another video. Thanks for watching.